Welcome to the Third Men Podcast Open Show 2021. The Third Man Podcast is a Jack White and Third Man Records history program. And we're normally just but a humble podcast. But for our season six opener, we've decided to put something special together for everybody. And I'll start by introducing myself. I am your co-host, Paul Kaminsky. Hey, I'm your other co-host, James Kaminsky. Welcome to this open show next week. It's a closed show. Yeah, it's going to be closed next week. James, this is uh, something different for us. We've never done anything like this before. This is a sort of a uh, quasi-internet concert slash fan festival slash talent show slash celebration of Third Man Records. In my mind's eye, this is uh, somewhat equivalent to the kinds of fan conventions we went to for acts like the Beatles in the past, and we decided to try and put one together uh, for Jack White and Third Man Records because uh, nobody's ever done it before. Yeah, we wanted a variety style kind of situation here where we can have fans come on and share stories and mm. have mm -hmm. some musical guests and some celebrity guests, if you will. That's right, James. And featured in this Third Men podcast open show in what we hope is the beginning of an annual tradition of open shows, uh, we'll be featuring several things, uh, not the least of which the leaf blower who is blowing outside of my, uh, outside of my window as we speak that's, here. That's some very good foley work done by me, by the way. <laughs> that's me uh, doing a leaf blower <laughs> next is a helicopter. Yeah, James has got the James has got the sound stuff going. I've actually got the CGI going, James. Did you know that the CGI is is working right now? Uh, actually, I, I, let me let me let me rephrase that. The CGI is not working yet. It's working now. Uh, am I in? Yeah, you now? you no, you are now depicted amongst a uh, an elaborate landscape. Uh, it's really beautiful CGI. I've I've augmented your muscles so that you look rippling and you just like a valiant warrior heading into battle it's gonna look great i promise um, Thank but you. we do only have the budget to to make it last for a little while so I'm, i am gonna stop it here uh, um paul i want to go back dip me back wait, into wait. that oh yeah there that's the stuff that's the All right records. and we're out of money oh. i'm just kidding we don't have a budget um so anyway we're gonna be featuring a lot of stuff in this open show, which we're very, very excited about. Uh, so I'll start here by sort of describing what we're going to see. We're going to see listeners uh, to the podcast, fans of Jack White, folks such as yourself viewing this on YouTube or your pod device or whatever it is that you're using to view this. Uh, we're going to see covers of Jack White songs, be they White Stripes, Raconteurs, Dead Weather, Solo, Rarities, quintessential jack covers any kind of uh number of different jack connected songs by you as performed by you and you know this is the thing that really got me excited about wanting to do this project james because we did something like this in an audio fashion last season when mm -hmm. we did the white stripes anatomy of a fandom and the response we got was tremendous the response we got to this just as awesome yeah so for those of you who are um you know lounging in your pods I, I don't really know how people listen or watch this show but um yeah it's uh it's bound to be a special event and we're really excited and the 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 work we've seen come in is extraordinary uh we have extremely talented listeners and mm -hmm. we are very excited to 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 show some of it off to you um including some work by uh by us uh, so i'm i'm excited to see to see your reactions to, to us. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, not to uh, not to get too much into uh, spoiler territory here, but I will be popping up a few times. And listen, I tried my best. That's all I could say. I tried my Well, let me rephrase that. I ran out of time and, and put together what I felt I could. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're very excited about those. Not only will we be featuring fan performances, but we'll also be featuring special appearances from some notable individuals, including musical performances. I don't want to give everything away all at the top here. There's going to be a lot of special guests. There's going to be some surprises. There's going to be some appearances you're not expecting. There's going to be uh, a lot of fun, hopefully, to be had, and we hope you all enjoy what we put together. 
Now, to start here, to kick off the festivities, we'd like to bring onto the, let's call it a stage, uh, a very special guest to offer us a, uh, an introduction for the open show. And uh, we'll, let that, uh, we'll let that person take it away here. All righty. I'm driving and recording this video at the same time, one-handed, terrible idea, but just wanted to give a hello, introductory, welcome, how's it going to everyone participating and signing in, checking out this Third Men podcast, soiree, shindig, open call, whatever you want to call it. Uh, thanks so much to everyone who gives a shit, right? Um, send in love. Have a wonderful, beautiful day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mr. Blackwell. Yeah. That was extraordinary that you agreed yeah. to this yet again. Uh, yet again. Um, that what you actually contributed was not extraordinary. I am disappointed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we loved it. Thank you, Ben. Um, Mr. Blackwell, uh, co-president and co-founder of the company that we love so much. Thank you for for that. Um, now, James, let's kick things off with our first round of fan performances for the Third Men Podcast Open Show. What do you say? I say that's a great idea. Let's do it. Yes, 
This is a little ditty by Jack Lawrence of the Dead Weather. It is called No Horse. This is Alex. And this is Jordan. And we're from Copper Sound Pedals. Today we're at the Nashville Electric Service. Fans may recognize the background behind us as it's the location for the artwork for Blunderbuss. Yes. We just wanted to congratulate the Kaminsky brothers on five successful years of the Third Men podcast and thank them both very much for including us in a couple special episodes. Thank you so much, gentlemen. We're really looking forward to season six. Season six. Let's go. All right, as you just saw there, we had fan performances from Matthew Steele, Nick Langford, and Gabriella Elizabeth Marie, followed by the awesome message from Copper Sound Pedals. Thank you, guys. Paul, I think it's time we pass it on off to a legend of mm. the Third Man universe, a legend of the Detroit universe. Uh, he graciously uh sent in some some stuff here to to show you all uh let's let's uh now open the floor to mr danny croha gory dollrod and amazingly talented musician take it away danny Thank you. 
What is up, Third Men Podcast? Um, my name is Jessie Zilka. For those that don't know me, um, I am one of the co-hosts of the Porch Podcast, which is an all Pearl Jam podcast. Um, I've been on with James and Paul a few times on their podcast, but they asked me to come on today um, to show you guys around my record store. So um, my record store is called Jesse Carl Vinyl. It's located in my hometown of Lakeland, Florida. I've been a business for six years. I've been a brick and mortar for five. Um, and I think the guys at Third Men just wanted me to kind of show you around and uh, give you a little tour. Um, if you see anything you like, please go onto our website, jessiecarlvinyl.com. We do have an online store there, so you can grab some goods. We ship uh, nationwide. Um, so definitely check that out. So um, if you can see behind me a little bit of what's going on, but um, behind me here is our main used section. Um, we have like rock and roll, we have pop, we have just a little bit of everything, some metal, some punk in here. Um, and then to this section is where we separate out some genres. So we have stuff like jazz, blues, country, religion, uh, folk, soul, stuff like that. Um, and then if you look even further behind me, actually we'll walk over here, um, you can see we have cassette tapes, lots and lots of cassette tapes. Um, these uh, containers that we have for our cassette tapes can hold, I think, up to like seven or 800 cassettes. There's a lot of cassette tapes, it's crazy. Also, I'm using a selfie stick and that's why I can do all of these things and it's awesome. Um, then we have some turntables. We sell mostly Audio-Technica, um, we've had to kind of find some other things because of all of the um, distribution issues with COVID, but we mainly sell Audio Technicas. They're a great brand if you've ever uh, decided to look into getting a turntable. They're a great startup turntable. Um, then we have all of our new stuff and our reissues. Um, so like we have new stuff like Lord's new album, but we also have reissues like Queen's Sheer Heart Attack, um, Television, Marquee Moon, a great record. Um, we also have some stuff like, let's see, oh, I don't know, maybe um, Mr. Jack White? Yes. Um, surprisingly enough, Mr. White is uh, slowing down on his distribution of his album. So White Stripe stuff is a little hard to get your hands on right now. Rock and Tour stuff is hard. Um, I don't really know why that is, but so when we have stuff in here with him, it is quite a treat. Um, and then behind me is our CD selection. So we have pre-loved CDs. Um, we update those pretty frequently because we've actually had quite a huge uptick in CD sales the past year and a half or so. And then that's pretty much it. We have like some used books over here um, that are music related. We've got buttons, we've got stickers, we've got magnets, and that's pretty much it. We also have um, cleaning supplies for your records and your turntable. So like needle cleaners, um, spin cleans to clean your records, um, all sorts of little fun gadgets. So that's pretty much the basis of my, um, my store. Um, there's my little office area back there, little tiny corner of the world. Um, but thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks so much to the Third Wind Podcast for letting me take a second to feature my store. I can't thank you enough for um, any support that anybody's given to this store, especially during these kind of unprecedented times. Um, it's been quite a blessing. So, and again, thanks so much to the Third Men Podcast. James, Paul, you freaking rule. Um, and we'll see you guys later. Take care. All right. Thank you to Danny Croa, who we just saw shredding that awesome cover of Apple of My Eye. And also thank you to Jesse from the Porch Podcast for that wonderful uh, tour of her record store. Uh, everybody... Support your local record shop, I think, is the main thrust of this. Jesse is one of many entrepreneurs out there um, trying to keep physical media in, in the hands of people and collectors and fans of music who, who really love it. So we thank Jesse for her efforts, and uh, we also thank her for submitting that wonderful video. Yeah, thank you so much, Jesse. That was wonderful. I think we should, uh, we should move on to, to some more, some more fan-submitted uh, acts. No? Good idea, James. <gasps> I had one. I had one good idea. I did it. I can die happy now. <laughs> Sweet 
right, so we're here at the Paramore Estate, which is where the Lazaretto album cover was shot. And uh, we wanted to sit on the throne for you all. Um, however, we have been told that our request to gain entry without actually staying here or, or exchanging money of any kind was a little strange. Yeah. And, yeah. and so the answering service was told us kindly to go away. <laughs> so I'll, I'll Photoshop me right here in the throne. Yeah. And um, Paul will be one of the angels, I guess, um, in the throne. That's right. And um, that's a good call. And yeah, so um, yeah, if any of you know um, how to scale walls. Yeah. Or maybe like catapult things. Yeah. Try can we can we catapult is the question. Uh, but yeah, we're here. How many and... shays is a trebuchet? I think three. In the meantime, while we figure out how many shays is in a trebuchet, enjoy this next performance of our open show. And we're going to try and get in here in the meantime. Well, yeah. And um, here's what it would look like if we were there. Are we in the Ghost Hunters? Is that how this works? Yes. I peed my pants right now. I'm so scared. <laughs> Good evening, folks. This is Glenn Spamzig from the world's premier Hawaiian theme Misfits tribute band, Honolulu Babylon, here to play a song just for you. Here goes. <laughs> So lonely all the time. I'm feeling so lonely every day. What can I do to make you realize that I really want you here today? Hey. And worry about the things that are even there. You may find it funny that I couldn't make you feel it every day. Tell 
such bands as the Dirt Bombs and uh, most recently I've been working on a project called the Heart of Detroit. Um, last year I had to take a brief a brief hiatus because it was a little bit overwhelming but now back with a vengeance. One of the things that I realized was that last year I did everything by myself and it nearly killed me. So when I decided to restart the project, I decided that I needed some help. So one of the wonderful things about the project was I got to meet a lot of wonderful people, including Mark Clacko here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark has been doing most of the photography, or I should say all of the photography, and I've been doing the writing for Heart of Detroit Part 2. Yeah, I mean, once you um, did that profile on me for Heart of Detroit Part 1, I mean, hell, from that day, we just kind of like hit it off and we were like, well... Best buds! <laughs> pretty much. And uh, from that point on, um, uh, you know, we hung out, we did our things. So I had here and there maybe of a protest or something downtown or something happened in the city. But um, eventually, you know, the idea kind of sprouted that it's like, hey, you know, we've got this part one of the heart of the tribe being... You know, all coast photos, all coast writing, um, and all of these were just uh, black and white, quick profiles on people. And the whole idea was, why don't we take that up a notch? Why don't we actually try to do something like a little bit more grandiose with it? And that's kind of like when we both were kind of like, hey, wait a minute, I can do the media part and do the photos and everything we need for um, that direction. And... Oh, you can just you know, keep doing the writing. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, you know, when I originally started the project, I wanted to do, you know, all the people, black and white, masks, hoping that COVID would be over in a couple months, and then I could take all the pictures of those people without masks and color, but of course, you know, 18 months later, we still have COVID. Now we have vaccines, COVID is still a problem, but it's a little bit safer. A little bit more manageable. I mean, especially considering, you know, how we were starting with our, like how safe we were going. I mean, we were going like hardcore. It was like, oh, you know, we, we got to have these N95 masks. We're going to stay like 12 feet away from people, <laughs> you know, I'll bring out the telephoto lens. And, uh, but you know, over time, as more and more people got vaccinated, um, you know, we were able to actually have a lot more, um, closer contact with people yeah. and, uh, you know, it, it's been a heck of a time, you know, so far in the project on 
just what we've done already. Uh, the characters that we've interviewed. Amazing! I mean, part two, you know, this was really going to knock part one out of the water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, and so part two, we're doing all color photos. We've been covering um, live shows, which has been pretty exciting. Oh yeah, I lost my hearing a few times already. <laughs> um, we're going to visit some favorites like uh, Mary Coat from the Detroit Cobras, Danny Dalrod, Timmy Vulgar, uh, people like that, and also some, some people from Detroit that you may or may not know. Um, so we're pretty excited about it. Now, we do need your help because all this work, it's not free. Uh, back when I started the project originally, gas was like a $1.50 a gallon. <laughs> oh gosh, I remember those <laughs> pandemic prices. <laughs> Got the bargain deal. Oh, 20 bucks to fill up my entire tank. Oh, oh, oh we can do this forever. <laughs> and, and yeah, and gas now is like, Three dollars and fifty cents a gallon. America's back, baby. <laughs> and um, and Mark and I have made a concerted effort that when we do go cover shows, we pay. Uh, we we pay to get into the shows. We don't ever ask for guest list because obviously, any bands or any DJs or anything. All those guys, they've all been out of work for all this time. So, you know, we're not going to say like, oh, let us into the show for free because they need to make their money. So that's a big expense for us as well. Oh yeah, you know, and that's the thing is like, we don't want this project to just be um, effectively like a Cohen Mark show where we pretty much just waltz anywhere we want and, you know, uh, capture it and leave. We want to support the acts. We want to support the arts. I mean, this entire project, you know, the whole thing that interested me was we are going to be highlighting the stories that often get overlooked, especially in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the last thing we want to do is have this, like, level of entitlement where it's just like, oh, well, we're going to give you this coverage, but you got to let us in for free. It's like, no. We, we actually want to support the arts and also boost it in our own way as we're doing this project. And we, we want to show, again, as in the beginning, the wonderful community and the wonderful people that make Detroit so special. Yeah, and we have got a lot of people coming up here. We've already... Jeez, I I I've lost count of how many people we've already done profiles on, but... Um, this time around with the book, we are uh, graduating from Instagram. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, at least Koa is, because she did all the entirety of part one. <laughs> but um, the part two, this is, will eventually be a physical copy where it, it actually will be something that you can physically have in your hands, and you can see these stories for yourself. A book! Hey, one of the best books that's ever going to come out of this year and possibly <laughs> and possibly something else but uh i don't know if we're gonna talk about that yet well there, there are a lot of uh tentative things in the works yes but so you just have to stay tuned yeah and uh all in all you know all we can do is just um ask for your guys support help us capture the heart of detroit part two and we plan to make this a real big project so Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we love you guys. So, long story short, they didn't let us in, um, but... What can you do? I mean, it's it's LA. People want to see these things all the time, and what, are they going to let anybody in? So Yeah, just, anybody who just calls and, you know, asks. Stupid. stupid. Very stupid. stupid. Very stupid. You know what's not stupid, though, is this next video we're about to show you that one's going to be a good one and again we're sorry we couldn't get by the actual angels yeah no it's it's a really it's, the, it's just kind of a shame we're here yeah it's, it's the closest we could find really it really is yeah um i mean all we were able to do is get near the pool equipment but like at least we got this one here it's, it's almost like it's, it's almost like it's dabbing yeah it's doing a little dabberino doing a little there dabberino. So, yeah anyway 
Um, enjoy the next, enjoy the next act. Enjoy the next act. She said it means never to be with another together And with the weight of a feather it tore into me And I knew it, all the work that it took to get through it On the wings of a feather that flew in Fell onto my shoe and cut up into me Such a trick, pretending not 
should be doing what he wants But it seems like everybody does this every waking moment An angel down and touched you like two of us both needed Safe to say that others might not approve of this and pleaded So selfish them would be Back to school, ring the bell, brand new shoes and walking blues, climb the fence, books and pens. I can tell that we are gonna be friends. I can tell that we are gonna be friends. Walk with me, Susie Lee, through the park and by the trees. We will rest upon the ground and look at all the bugs we found. Safely walk to school without a sound. Safely walk to school without a sound. Here we are, no one else. We walk to school all by ourselves. There's dirt on our uniforms from chasing all the ants and worms. We clean up and now it's time to learn. We clean up and now it's time to learn. Numbers, letters, learn to spell, nouns in books and show and tell. Playtime, we will throw the ball back to class, through the hall. Teacher marks our hide against the wall. Teacher marks our hide against the wall. We don't notice any time pass. We don't notice anything. Side by side in every class. Teacher thinks that I sound funny, but she likes the way you sing. Tonight I'll dream while I'm in bed. Silly thoughts run through my head about the birds and alphabet. When I wait tomorrow, I'll bet you and I will walk together again. I can tell that we are gonna be friends. I can tell that we are gonna be friends. All right, so thank you to Ariana Dudick for her wonderful cover of You've Got Her in Your Pocket, as well as Glenn Spamzig for one of my favorite Black Bells tunes, Hey, What Can I Do? Thank you, John, and uh, thank you, Jamie, for helping to put that together. And also to Alex Shax for Screwdriver, Co Molina for the message we got there. I'll check out the Heart of Detroit at the website on the screen here for more on that and uh, how to support the Heart of Detroit. Everybody, I encourage you to, uh, to get out there and do it. We'd also like to thank our friend Tobias over at Atmeg for his cover of Forever For Her is Over For Me, as well as Katie Johnson-Smith and Don Duro. Uh, you guys are great. Those were magnificent. Thank you so much. We'd now like to cut to another special musical guest, Ms. Lucy Walsh. Take it away, Lucy. Go ahead, go ahead and smash it on the floor. Take whatever's left and take it with you out the door. See if I cry, see if I shed a single sorry tear. I can't say that it's been that great. No, it's been a wasted, worried year. Everybody sees and everyone agrees that you and I are wrong and it's been that way too long. Take it as
as he comes be thankful when it's done there's so many ways to act and there's many shades of black oh there's many shades of black oh many shades of black let it out let it all out and say what's on your mind you can kick and scream and shout and say things that are so unkind. See if I care, see if I stand firm or if I fall. Cause in the back of my mind and the tip of my tongue is the answer to it all. Everybody sees and everyone agrees that you and I are it comes be thankful when it's done there's so many ways to act and there's many shades of black oh many shades of black oh there's many shades of black Hi, I'm Annabelle Jones. Hi, I'm Lucy Walsh. Annabelle? Yeah. Are you okay? I've been through some changes. Uh, here we are. I'm Paul Kaminsky. I am the, uh, I produce the Lucy and Annabelle show. Brilliantly. It's a wonderful podcast starring one Lucy Walsh and Annabelle Jones, who couldn't be with us today. And we are going to talk a little bit about this show. Lucy, can you tell us a little bit about the mission statement behind the Lucy and Annabelle show? Yeah, the mission statement behind the Lucy and Annabelle show is that we are just two dumb bitches with a microphone who have no business talking about anything we discuss. I think that was a cool Modi song, <laughs> two dumb bitches and a microphone. But you know what makes us qualified to talk about adulting, mental health, joy, pain, grief, is that we're human. Yeah. That qualifies us, and we just try to be as truthful as we can and discuss things that we feel should be spoken about more, things that everybody's too afraid to say out loud. Yeah. So the show is weekly, and it's recorded the same week that it's released, so it's up to the minute, and you've got news in there. Um, if you can call it news, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not important news. It's just our, our version of news. And uh, so there's also the current events in both of your lives. Yes. And your unique perspectives as artists and daughters of artists uh, working in entertainment. And I think those have been some of the most interesting stories for me that you've shared on the podcast about your experiences with major labels. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we started the podcast because we share in common having musician fathers. My dad's in the Eagles and Annabelle's dad is in the Monkees. And it really took a turn from there, which we weren't expecting. It's blossomed into this whole other universe that's been such a pleasure to journey through with, with Annabelle, my partner in crime. But we wanted it in real time. That's important to us because we just want to be sharing what's going on on a weekly basis and, and creating um, a community for people that they know is there for them with a new episode coming out every week. Yeah. And I think that I know a lot of our listeners t have told me that they really come to depend on that. Mm. And it kind of gives them a way to check themselves once a week, almost like a therapy session, I guess. Yeah. But free. And free. <laughs> but yeah, we were both signed to major labels as musicians. And that's a very unique experience that a lot of people don't have. And we have a lot of valuable information. Yeah. And we want to share that information so that other artists don't have to waste the energy and the time that 
we did, you know, just share the lessons you've learned, pass it on to others so that you can save them heartache. Yeah. <laughs> and so the listeners to my other programs, Third Men Podcast, now hear this yesterday and today, and take it away. All of those shows deal with artists in the past and we reflect on artist situations with hindsight. But the Lucy and Annabelle show is a an extremely timely, current and vital look at the music process. And I highly recommend all our listeners check it out. Lucy, when is it available and where is it available? It is available everywhere you listen to your podcast. Holy shit. Everywhere. You're the producer. Don't you know these answers better than I do? I just show up and talk into a microphone for an hour. I'm just putting it in the cloud. Also, it comes out every Saturday night. So yeah. wherever you are in the world, Sunday, you can check out a brand new episode. Yeah. Of the Lucy and Annabelle show, once again, this has been Annabelle Jones and Lucy Walsh signing off. Love you. Love you. <laughs>tell yorba it's been my favorite song for a long long time it had an americana kind of folky vibe to it with a really interesting story and my wife really liked the tune as well we both kind of played it a lot it was it was a it was a favorite of ours to play together in, in road trips and stuff and um which we insisted that was one of the, the few songs we insisted uh be played um by the dj at the wedding and uh he played it and they put it on, and there were about five of us on the dance floor. Um, me, Ariel, and Paul, and Ariel's uncle and aunt, who were also huge White Stripes fans. And, and we were just the only five kind of on the dance floor, just just chopping it up. We were, we were out there. And, and yeah, it was, it, 
that was a very special kind of memory of that song. Anywho, this is a lot of rambling about a whole lot of nonsense. Um, but uh, I hope it's something. I hope it's something that we can enjoy together, live together, laugh together, love together. We're gonna scratch all that. Oh, I've gotta stop her. <laughs> all right, so thank you to Lucy Walsh and to everyone who submitted their uh, fan art that we uh, just showcased there in the fan art and fan memories montage sequence. Now, James, we'd like to throw it to a, uh, I guess, our third person or people for this week. Uh, we're we're going to have actually uh, an interview portion of the show. And uh, yeah, we're going to throw it over there right now. What do you say, James? That sounds f- fantastic and like a surprise. It shouldn't be. I wasn't surprised by it. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> like to welcome to the third men podcast open show some very special guests we have uh joining us again uh we have april march uh welcome back april it's nice to see you it's nice to see you too and we also have joining us medi zanad who uh, is known as Fugu and has uh, worked with you on your new record in cinerama medi welcome to the show thanks for joining us Oh, thank you. So, of course, we're talking about In Cinerama, which I happen to have here. Well, there's your head sort of floating around on the Zoom here. <laughs> uh, I love this record so much. Holy crap. You both did amazing, amazing work together. Phenomenal. Thank you. Uh, in fact, I think, uh, Eleanor, I think this is... I think this is the best your voices even sounded maybe ever. Like, I think this is like, <laughs> like, I think it's your I best vocal blush. ever. No, seriously, it's really, really good. Uh, so I, I, I wanted I wanted to talk to you both a little bit about how this came together. Mehdi, we haven't had you on the show before, so you're first up here. But, you know, your own music is so melodic and, and danceable and, and, you know, it has that wonderful acoustic sort of beat flair. And we hear a lot of kinship uh, with Eleanor's music uh, within your own music. In fact, you two have collaborated before. There's a wonderful track uh, called Airport, which I really love. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Yeah. And that video is, is is amazing, too. Like you spliced some images from the, I guess, the, was it the French version of the airport movie was in that as well as the American? Yeah, that was a, our first collaboration. And it's... Um a bit discreet so we we thought uh, that we should do something where uh, it w- it would be more uh, plain to see uh, what we could do together yeah well well tell us a little bit how you got to meet each other uh you know you you were sort of around making music at the same time but how did your paths first cross and how did that relationship evolve into in Cinerama, the album we're talking about today uh it was through a guy uh, called uh, Jean Emmanuel, right? Uh, Elinor. Is that the, he put us together through mail because he thought uh, yeah. he's a, a guy who's got a label in uh, Rouen, and uh, and uh, he's, he he wrote me and he wrote to uh, Elinor saying you guys should meet should meet each other, and from then. Um, we met in Paris when uh, Elinor came and uh, we exchanged previously on our uh, mutual uh, sharing, shared uh, influences and what we liked about uh, each other's music. And uh, yeah, and we got along well and that's uh, it built up slowly and maybe uh, Elinor knows where uh, she can tell you uh, where where the records really started because it was it started from a demand from uh, Jonathan Cowett, right, uh, Elinor? Yeah, so there's a filmmaker um, named Jonathan Cowett. He's really known for his movie called Tarnation, uh-huh. which I don't know if you've seen that. It's an amazing film. It's about him and his mother, and it was produced by 
Gus Van Zant, and he made it for a hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> um, I movie and it you know it won all the awards and everything and then he did an all tomorrow's party movie which you might have seen hmm. a film of that but um and some other stuff yeah he asked he liked both of our music and he asked me if we would do two songs for his new film uh-huh. and so we did lift off and then yeah. he wanted um so that one you know uh the kickoff track for yeah that that was movie. that was an original and then he wanted us to do a cover of um down the line which is from a film called bless the beast and the children uh-huh. those two songs and i think we thought oh these are pretty good <laughs> <laughs> now you've got a you got a bad habit of being asked to do like two songs and then doing like 50 so uh you know like what when last we had you on you were in the studio with olivia jean to do one cover and instead you walked out with a whole ep i you've got a real problem with this eleanor i think i don't know you know I always, it happens because i only work with people that i really admire that i want to work with so it's usually pretty implicit that once we get in the studio it's going to be really fun it's going to work really well yeah. you know I mean? so i think yeah right Mehdi, we just decided this sounds pretty good yeah that's right and uh elinor pushed me to uh, to do more songs so <laughs> it's uh it's totally her initiative and i thank her for that but she kept on asking me for songs and and uh I wrote a couple of original ones because she sent me lyrics to write too, and that inspired me. And she said, "Okay, uh, maybe I can. We can use one of the Fugu songs, and I, I would like to sing again uh, that one." And then I dug up some songs I, I never recorded, and so it happened like that. But it's uh, it's really Eleanor who pushed me to do it because I, I was at the period of time where I didn't especially wanted to to write so she forced me to do it. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry I haven't been uh, piping up too much I've been enjoying listening to this as if I'm listening to a, a podcast so um, <laughs> I'm sorry uh, I was just kind of enthralled in all of the conversation going on. Eleanor I, I this is like your first LP release in about like almost 10 years I want to say since around like 2013 am I right in saying that? Um, yeah, I think in between that, I did some soundtrack stuff with Bertrand Gerard. Okay. Um, and, the, and the We're Gonna Be Friends uh, single, too. Yeah. yeah, and then I did a, um, I started an album with a French group named Staplin. Oh, nice. So that so album is also finished, so I was kind of doing both. So was there a, was there a moment in this, like you, you said that, you wanted to continue doing more songs after you started those first two. Was there a moment that kind of clicked after that? Like that you said, like, this should be a full album that I should turn this into in Cinerama, you know? I mean, yeah, it's just, I think, you know, I think especially we decided to ask Petra and Rachel Hayden to do mm -hmm. the backing vocals. And I don't know, that just all sort of sounded magical. And then yeah. I think there was this feeling of sort of wanting to do the very, almost like Mamas and the Mamas type <laughs> situation. Yeah. Right. A lot of, you know, backing vocal arrangements, because it's just, I mean, Medi's songs really lend themselves to that. And then, so there was that, but then also, subsequently I did a TV show in Paris with Tony Allen. Mm -hmm. and I just really wanted to do something with him. And so I kept writing to his manager over the course of a year to see if he would record with me. And then all of a sudden, I guess it was like Christmas Eve, I got an email from his manager saying, Tony is available for you <laughs> this one week in February. So that's it. So <laughs> he's, he's available. So I called Medi and I was like, you have to we have to write like four <laughs> songs in yeah. five minutes. yeah yeah that's in uh Eleanor, she she puts people together a bit it's like a filmmaker so it's like it's a bit uh, like a movie this 
album so she chose the things happening between uh, Tony Allen and me it's completely uh, incongruous for me and it's it was a great experience it's, uh, or so it was a, a great mixture and uh, I think um, yeah she, she's like a cast she did a, a great casting and uh, yeah that's what happened and uh, we kind of both uh, directed the thing like uh, we trusted each other and it was very complicated to to do because it lasted a long time and the there's a lot of people playing on it so it's a really i see it uh, as a movie so it's uh it was like a ship to uh to drive on a sea <laughs> so, yeah. it was a quiet sea everything went really really well people were great and, uh, yeah. So it's not like uh, an album done in the with pain or anything. It was a great pleasure to do. Yeah, this isn't your plastic Ono band. It, it sounds a uh, it sounds joyous. You know, it sounds there's, it a, there's a joy to it. And I love, by the way, it, not only is it called Incinerama, but on the back here we have an I- image of the uh, arc light. Well, the uh, the old Cinerama dome. The Cinerama dome. That's Maddie's artwork. Is it really? Oh, beautiful. Yeah, uh, it's an etching yeah. I did. Uh... Are you kidding me? No, yeah, he's uh... amazing. I thought this was, oh my God, I'm seeing it now. I thought this was a photo. No, no it's an etching. etching. Holy crap. I'm sorry, you're catching me by surprise here. This, the, you fooled, uh, this is amazing. Wow, yeah, now that I'm seeing this detail, it's phenomenal. It's, uh, in fact, it's a reconstruction of how it was in the 60s. So Yeah. Because we met in LA to to do some stuff for the album, and I, at the same time, I did uh, take uh, documentation uh, in LA of drawings I wanted to do, and amongst <laughs> them there was the Cinerama. But now they built around it, yeah, a horrible uh, thing uh, like <laughs> more. <laughs> so and so I reconstructed from old postcards and my pictures uh, the pictures I took with this is the point of view my picture at the time uh, the state it was in in the 60s and uh, what I noticed in once upon a time in Hollywood there's a glimpse right. of the building and it's the nowadays state you know you see with the, the- Thing around it yeah 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 they didn't suppress the so i uh, i saw that and i was really surprised the tarantino let this uh like that because it's a very meticulous uh, reconstruction i have a i'm gonna write him a very strongly worded letter about this I think. yeah you should <laughs> shocking maybe he will erase it digitally uh, <laughs> uh, and pull back all the dvds and <laughs> now in in the defense of the horrible strip mall that popped up around it there's a very yeah, good sushi easy. place there uh, you can eat <laughs> off of a conveyor belt it's lovely i mean in reality, Paul just wants that in the etching. He wants that and like a yeah. giant inflatable minion from Despicable Me, <laughs> just sitting on top of it. Well, they, it's so sad that uh, one of the great, one of the great uh, um, sort of uh, what, what? How should I phrase this? One of the great disappointments of the COVID era <laughs> is oh. that. There's yeah. uh, there's only a couple, Paul. Well, yeah. well, that's why I said I wasn't going to say tragedy because there are greater tragedies. This is more of a great disappointment <laughs> in the COVID era is that, yeah, it is no longer uh, in operation, although we're hoping somebody swoops in to save uh, Arclight and the Cinerama Dome. Because uh, I really don't want the last movie I saw there to be Kong Skull Island, which, by the way, I loved, but I feel like I need a better one <laughs> to land on there. <laughs> They closed the the cinema, right? They sold it, or yeah, I don't know actually who owns it right now, but it's not open to my knowledge. Um, but it, it was like up in the air for a little while there. We'll see. You know, the, the sonic space that you've both built on this record is just vast. I mean, there's a, like it it bears repeat listens because not only do you have all those wonderful harmonies, but all the instrumentation takes you by surprise and sometimes even the panning takes you by surprise and you're like what the hell was that and it, it it's it it's like uh it feels cinematic you know it's fitting that the album is called Incinerama because it has a a sort of sweeping kind of cinematic dramatic uh flair to it and i gotta tell you i know i'm gushing about this thing you too but i love this record this record is very very good i it has been a, a, an absolute joy to talk to you both uh, listeners uh, and, and viewers, 
uh, to the uh, Third Men Podcast Open Show. Uh, check your local record shops. This uh, limited edition version was out on Record Store Day in this past July, I think July 17th. Mm-hmm. Um, so check, see if copies are still available. Everybody should be checking April March's social media and website and stuff for updates. There's there's bound to be more in the future. That's yeah, we, that's what I meant to that. say is that one. The, the part you, the part you, the the awkward cut you saw there was me saying something I shouldn't have said. Uh, so check out uh, more of uh, Medi's music uh, online. Uh, Medi, where can where should people go to to find more of your music? You have a band camp, right? Uh, the last release was uh, a duet I did with a um, singer who's called a girl called Eddie, and we did a, an album called The Last Detail was released by Elephant Records and otherwise there's my French album called uh, Fugue under my name Medizana and the two uh, Fugu albums As Found and Fugu One so there's uh, all on uh, Spotify and uh, you can find all this on the on any uh, any platform uh. yeah get those streams we got to get those dollar dollars rolling you know what I mean like so stream that stuff everybody and if you like, if if people like the songs on Encinarano, the one Californian Fall, that one is from uh, the Fugu album called As Found, and then the other one that's called Born is from uh, the first Fugu. album. What's the first album called, Midi? Called the Fugu One. Fugu, Fugu One. So you yeah. should check out um, the Midi Zanad albums, but also Fugu One and As Found are really great. And nice. uh, as we talked about last time you were on, uh, Eleanor, the uh, the wonderful work you did with uh, Ms. Olivia Jean, who I'm supporting here with my Night Owl shirt, uh, is uh, is available now on on Third Man Records. And uh, if you have it for some reason, check that out yet, which I don't know why you would not have. Uh, please do that. Uh, Eleanor, any plans to maybe play the Blue Room uh, or something like that? Any? I mean, Olivia and I are hoping, you know, at some point to do that. It, the, they did open the blue room so mm-hmm. yeah it's a bar now from what i On, understand like thursdays or like it's like three days a week or something it's a bar now yeah but, yeah and you know olivia has been out um playing some shows you probably saw on her social media so i mean i think as things are opening up we'll see but yeah it'd be great to our, fingers crossed thank you both so much uh again a wonderful record and we really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, thank you both so much. Thank you to April March and Fugu for discussing the wonderful album In Cinerama. Check that out. It is fantastic. April's voice is incredible. Singular voice in rock and roll, and I really, really love her new record. Yeah, it was uh, super fun to talk to you again, April. And yeah, we both love the the record quite a bit. It's great. Thank you. James, what do we got next? Hey, we got we got more live acts coming here.
Thanks to Will Mackey, and thanks to Spirit Wives. That would be uh, Hillary Ann on vocals and John Johnny Lee Ledford on everything else for the hardest button to button. And uh, that was my take on Keep It Clean because I like that song. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I loved it so much with the, with the ice cream and the Coca-Cola. <laughs> Stop about ice cream uh we got another special guest don't we james i think so shall we pass it on off to our friend and yours mr craig brown let's do it oh hey didn't see you there sorry craig brown couldn't actually give us a video for this but what he was able to do was give us a sample of his latest album that's going to be coming out soon so be sure to check out all of Craig's online presence and social media stuff to keep on top of that. And uh, here's a sample of his latest stuff coming out. Enjoy. Now I'm gonna get I'm gonna get back to this.
Oh, man, that was great. Thank you so much, Craig. And you should all go out and uh, look for the latest releases by the Craig Brown you Band. You have to find it. You have to go out and search. We're for... not going to tell you because that you have to enjoy the struggle. Right. Okay. Uh, that's our motto. We're just kidding. Find Craig Please Brown. struggle. <laughs> on Third Man Records, his uh, Craig Brown Band record. And he's got some new material coming out soon. And so we're really excited for that. And uh, we'll put links to all of these these things that we're plugging in the description on the YouTube uh, video. And, man, I sound like an old, an old man. The YouTube <laughs> video. <laughs> and there'll be links to all these things in the description on the both the YouTube video and the, the podcast. So go check them out. Yeah, do that. And in the meantime, we've got some more fan acts for you to enjoy this one goes out to little Yanzi Anderson who's not feeling so good right now
everybody, uh, Vito here, or as I'm known in the uh, Third Men podcast world, uh, I think it was Mythology, maybe, I think that's what it was, I haven't heard the nickname in a while, to be honest, I forget, um, but uh, anyway, um, Paul and James hit me up to uh, cover a song by Jack, or one of his many um, incarnations. Um, and after a while of saying I was not going to, um, I finally decided that I would. And I spent about a week trying to figure out which song I would play. And after listening to pretty much nothing but Jack for the last week, um, for the first time in a while, I uh, tried to find the song that I didn't think anyone else would play. And uh, one that really meant a lot to me. So, uh... I finally found the one that I wanted to play today. Um, it's one that really hits hard to me a lot, showing that, um, you know, even if I'm, it doesn't matter if I'm playing a show at a bingo hall somewhere, or um, if I've, you know, played all the way across the country, um, you know, it shows that if you really set your mind to it, you can kind of achieve anything. Um, so yeah, um, I'll play the song. Um, I hope you guys like it. Um, here it goes. We have now uh, officially played every province and territory in Canada. But yeah, so that was the song. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys remember that um, song. Uh, it was really good. Uh, hit really hard, I'm pretty sure it was recorded in Canada somewhere, um, can't remember the year, but yeah, I just want to thank, uh, Jack and everything that he's done for me musically, uh, to inspire me, um, along with, uh, Ben Blackwell as well, I'm sure he'll probably be watching, um, hi Ben, um, and then, uh, obviously, Paul and James, uh, thanks guys, can't wait to hear everyone else's covers, um, have a good one. Thank you all so much for sending those in. That was Larry Raziel on J Just One Drink. We have Amy Hart, the heart of the operation, mm. uh, doing the same boy you've always known, as well as Vito Hicks. Did we ever come up with one? Oh, yeah, the Flying Vito. Flying Ooh. Vito, that's right. I, I nearly nearly lost my mind yeah, there. Nearly lost Sorry, his Vito. mind. Sorry, James almost uh, lost doing, his mind. Doing the, probably the best cover we've ever gotten. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty good. It was like, pretty good. I, I mean, I'm not throwing shade onto the other acts. Like, they were all amazing top tier some of the best we've ever seen but Vito <laughs> can I tell you something this is a true story there are two versions of that <laughs> <laughs> one was an accident one was two notes <laughs> I'm dead serious there were two takes anyway we have another special guest here about to join us on the program Mr. Hobie Eklund take it away Hobie I remember Hobie he was great I love that hey this is Hobie from Majesty Crush and this is the lovely and talented Laurel Ann Shriver, our designated singer for the day. And what we're going to do today for the Third Man Podcast, I just want to thank everybody for inviting us to be on this, is I'm going to do a quick tutorial for the song Number One Fan, which is the first song on the Southeastern Saturn compilation. And we're also going to play a version of it. So the song essentially has three parts. It's this kind of bouncy bass line, which is the A, a note on the D string, and it always bounced down to the a, to the E on the A string. So it goes. And then it goes to G flat. And then E up to the G. Down to the D. So it's A, 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 E, E, G flat, G flat, G flat, whatever. E. G, 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 and then this little riff. And then the chorus, because I'm your number one fan, is a chord played open A, the A string on the D, and the E string on the G. So it's, and then it goes down to the G flat, same chord, and then it bars, and then the chord on the E on the D string, and then up to the G. And it bars. Now, on the second and third um, 
chorus is. We used to call it part, break, window, but I realized it's actually the chorus. There's kind of an up high part before Dave, the singer, God rest his soul, comes back in. And what I do is on that second part, when he does the verse, is go to a low part. So it's the A, the F sharp, E, E, G. You can bounce it off the B. Then whenever it goes back to the, I take a car, a plane, a car, a train, a boat, a plane, it goes back to the. Now at the very, very end, when it's the, I'd kill the president for your love, all the for your loves, that's this kind of angelic end of the song thing, which is the A note on the A string on the octave, and then an octave up from that, the A note on the G string, kind of. And it does these same chords, that same progression. President, One more time. And then up to the A. Okay, you got it? So now we're going to try. Okay, one, two, three, four. questions i'm pretty easy to reach again i want to thank the third man podcast for inviting me and us to do this 
And um, rest in peace, Dave Strotter. And thank you, uh, Third Man, for everything you've done to keep Dave's legacy and music alive and my wacky bass playing. Thanks a lot. Hell Blues by the White Stripes. I know I keep talking about my favorite songs if you've seen my other videos. This is one of the 10 songs in my top three favorite White Stripes songs or Jack White songs. So they're all crammed in that top three position and this is one of them, Catch Hell Blues. So I hope you love it. It's why I bought a slide. I'm not very good at a slide. Most people that teach videos on the interweb say the same thing. I'm not very good at the slide. It's that special guy that's really, really good at it. Uh, guys like Jack. Uh, so anyway, we're going to try to learn this. Um, you can actually learn to play it without the slide. Of course, that's not the essence of the song. You'll need to get there. But in the meantime, you can kind of learn the movement on the fretboard while you're also learning how to use the slide. At least that's my humble advice. So you'll put yourself in open A tuning. And if you're not sure what that is, the song is probably a little advanced for you. But open A is simply E A E A C sharp E. So that's how you'll tune your guitar. And when you play it open, that's like playing a regular A major chord on standard tuning. So we're going to start with the uh, two little notes he's toggling back and forth, and that's the two A notes. So your A string and what used to be G string. He's just going back and forth on those two as the little subtle intro. Once he's done that a few times, he slides uh, kind of aggressively up to the fifth fret and bounces down to the fourth a little bit. And you know, that's the thing about playing the slide. It needs to be, how do I say it? It needs to be accurate, but not exact. It needs to be precise, but not exact. So up to the fifth fret, uh, wobble down to the fourth a, a time or two slide down to the third and release that's the intro and then uh, so that's a little bit tricky but uh, you can get there I uh, op hit the uh, open call them by their standard strings the G and the B string I hit those open slide up to the third fret so from the second to the third fret back down to the second and then release in one quick movement so yeah, I think I hit it open and then I do that second to third back to second and open same thing on the, you just move up one string so that you're now hitting the uh, D and G, the conventional D and G strings. And this time you'll uh, actually hit it an extra time on that third fret. Let's see. So you see the difference there? something very similar on the on one string up which would give you now the A and D string accidentally grab the E there Could ever 
The last time I saw you, your pretty hair was red. But today I see you got black hair on your head. You say you got your new man with plenty of dough. Oh, baby, you may fool him, but you know that I Thanks to Hobie Eklund of Majesty Crush for that wonderful bass tutorial of number one fan. Really appreciate that. As well as our final rotation of fan artists, we have Chuck Davis on Catch Hell Blues, our own Tom Valente of the Third Men House Band for his rendition of Ugly As I Seen, which is wonderful, as well as uh, Rob Janos. Do we have a, oh, Robin a Bank? That's his, that's him, right? Yeah, yeah. When you're Robin a Bank? Uh, for performing You Know That I Know, which is a wonderful, wonderful choice. Great selection. Or now we can call him, well, you know that Janos. Wow. Well, you know that Janos. Janos. Um, wow. And that brings us to the end, James, of the Third Men Podcast Open Show 2021. Thanks to everybody who contributed to help making this event great. We hope you all enjoyed it. At home, we certainly had a lot of fun putting it together, and we can't wait for this season. The season's going to be a doozy. Yeah, seriously, thank you for the the outpouring of uh, acts and fan material and memories and 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 just uh, coming to our aid in making this all come together. We are so very thankful to you guys because um, this is this is this is a fan show. We're all here talking about a thing we all like. That's and right. so we're we're really happy to have put this together for you all and for you all to have put this together for us in a, in a manner of speaking. So, <laughs> manner of speaking. so thank you. Yeah, we have got some great episodes in store for the upcoming season six. We've recorded a couple of them already. And they uh, you, some special guests that, again, I don't think you're going to see coming. Uh, maybe you will. I don't know. I don't know you. But uh, I, we think regardless of whether you can see them coming or not, they will come at you, and we think you will enjoy it. We're coming for you, basically, is what we're saying. Yeah, yeah no, uh, you won't see us coming. <laughs> and even if you do, it won't matter, because we're still coming. And now's the time, I think, we'll do a reference to a star of Rambo? James, well, hold on. Mm? I'm being told we have a little more money in the budget. I'm going to do the, the special effects now okay Ooh. james now you're back to being really buff and ripply and muscly. Well, this is great no i love it yeah Thank so you. just go ahead and give me a little bit of a I'll flex a there little... look wait wait yep. there we go yeah oh james is oh, looking there's so the, there's yep. the sweet stuff so he's got yeah. the gun show the happening in there. Are there. Right. Well, we're out of money oh man so thanks to everybody again and um we can't wait to see you soon and until next third men podcast open show hopefully in 2022 I'll be looking for a home in your YouTube. And I will be looking for <laughs> a home in... And I'll be looking for a home in Zoom mm. with... And I'll be looking for a home in your family <laughs> zoom birthday party <laughs> because this is where we live now is in zoom we're all in zoom together 
We'll see you next time, everyone. Bye.